Pretty much every crazy gun from every sci-fi movie in the 1990s is actually real and they all came from this program. <laughs> Today we're talking about the Advanced Combat Rifle Program. Ladies and gentlemen, it all started out so innocent in 1986 when the US government came out and said, hey, our current service rifle is EM-16. We're looking for something a little bit more accurate. And when we say a little, we mean like twice as accurate. We want 100% improvement in accuracy across the board. That's the only stat we care about. We don't care about anything else. Just build the gun. But first, a word from our sponsor, because this video is brought to you by my favorite sporting goods store, Shields. They've got a bunch of really cool retail locations all across the United States and an even better online store where you can get pretty much anything that has anything to do with going outside or being physically active or beef jerky. They have a bunch of beef jerky too. Anyways, if you use the link on my website or in the description down below, you're gonna get free shipping on your order. Let's get back to this video. Just build the gun. At this exact moment, every single firearms contractor on the planet zooms in and they're like, excuse me, I get full creative rain to do whatever I want as long as it's accurate. And the US government's like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's see what you guys can come up with. At which point, they freak out. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. Okay, but then they reel it back in and they're like, hold on, calm down, calm down, it's okay. What's the budget on this program? To which the United States military is kind of like, yeah, well, you know, whatever, we'll pay for it in the end, just have fun. Stay calm, everybody just calm down. And at that exact moment, sanity, sobriety, common sense, they all leave the chat because all of these weapon manufacturers have just went from, we're gonna build a new gun to we're gonna build something to hunt aliens with. And not only that, they're gonna try to make a bajillion dollars while they do it because every weapons contractor gets the exact same idea. Not only are they gonna build a gun, but they're gonna recreate what a bullet is and then build a gun to fire this new type of bullet. That way they get to patent the gun and they get to patent the ammunition for it. So then the US government is on the hook to buy all their ammunition from this one sole provider. Just straight up, Jimmy, grab the wheel, throw it away. We're gonna reinvent the whole thing. So all four companies take the wheel, throw it away. They're gonna reinvent the whole thing from the ground up. So a ton of different companies submitted their ideas, but America decided they were gonna go with four of them for testing. And those four were AAI, Style, Heckler and Coke and Colt. All right, starting off with AAI and Steyr, they both had pretty much the same idea. They weren't gonna shoot bullets at the enemy anymore. They were gonna shoot flechettes at the enemy, which if you don't know, is just a big metal dart. They literally created the Needler from the Halo video game. It's my favorite Covenant weapon. And their logic behind doing that was that these flechettes were gonna be more accurate because they were hauling ass out of the barrels of these guns, okay? To put it into perspective, the muzzle velocity of a 5.56 round is like 3,000 feet per second-ish. An AK-47 7.62 by 39 ammunition is going like 2,200 feet per second. These flechettes were leaving the barrel at 4,900 feet per second. This thing's basically shooting fucking laser beams out of it. And this essentially meant that the shooter wasn't gonna to have to compensate for bullet drop, in theory, increasing its accuracy. So that was a general idea of what they both kind of built their gun around and pretty much where the similarities end because the Steyr decided they were gonna put their flechette inside of a polymer cased ammunition. The polymer cased rounds weighed like half as much as a brass cased round, so that's good because you could carry more ammunition, more accuracy by volume, that's what America's all about. They're gonna love it, in theory. The issue they ran into though is that when you fire a bullet, it's basically a small controlled explosion. And when you do that inside of a piece of brass, that brass absorbs a lot of heat and then immediately gets ejected out of a gun. But when you do it with a polymer casing, the polymer does not absorb nearly as much heat before it gets ejected, meaning that all that heat goes right back into the gun, you know, like the barrel. This meant that the barrels, A, wore out way quicker, and B, if you fired too much and the barrel got too hot, and then you shoved your polymer case ammunition into the chamber, it would just cook off and the round would explode in your face. So, the Steyr gun is out. AAI, on the other hand, decided that they were gonna put their flechette inside of a 5.56 brass casing, and it worked way better. The barrels lasted longer, the rounds weren't gonna cook off. It seemingly fixed the issue that Steyr had. But like I said, they stuck the flechette inside of a 5.56 round, which if you don't know, is the same size as the M16 round, meaning that in theory, you could stick these flechettes inside of an M16 and you could stick regular 5.56 ammunition inside of this new AAI rifle, but the AAI rifle wasn't equipped to handle it. And as soon as you tried to fire a regular 5.56 round, it would more than likely blow up in your face. So AAI is out. They broke the cardinal rule of engineering, okay? If it's not supposed to go there, make sure it doesn't fit there. Because if it fits there, a bunch of military dudes are absolutely gonna put it there at least once 
twice if they like it, just to see what happens. Okay, and I realize that the vast majority of my audience is probably male, but for the small female minority, if you don't believe me on this, let's conduct an experiment, pull your phone out, hit record, post it to the internet later because I want to see. But walk into a room where any man in your life is just sitting down watching TV. It could be your dad, your husband, your boyfriend, your dude that's a friend, any grown ass man, and just ask him out of left field, like, hey, do circular saw blades fit on your weed whacker? He is immediately going to look at you and go, nope and go back to watching TV because he knows with absolute certainty they don't because he fucking tried. I promise you. Six months ago, there was a baby tree that the weed whacker couldn't take out and the tree was talking shit. He had to address the situation and that was the solution that he tried first. Every dude does it. Moral of the story, if it fits there, it goes there. If you don't want it to go there, don't let it fit. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have the magnetic accelerator gun from the Demolition Man movie. The last produced handheld weapon of this millennium displaced the flow of neutrons so what, 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 in these batteries? What size? I mean, what, what the fuck do you find batteries in the future? That is actually the G11 and is manufactured by Heckler Does Coke. I mean, Heckler and Coke, which if you don't know is a German company and the G11 actually fires a caseless ammunition. That red block is actually the propellant or the black powder itself. So that entire thing gets burned up and there's nothing that actually ejects out of the gun. Yet somehow the Germans figured out how to solve the heating issue that the polymer cased ammunition had by not having a casing at all. And this is why this gun has earned the internet nickname of Kraut Space Magic. And while that caseless ammunition is super cool, it's not actually going to make it more accurate than the M16. So their strategy for that was to make this gun shoot at 2100 rounds per minute in three round burst. That meant that the gun was so fast in three round burst mode that when you pulled the trigger, it would fire all three rounds before the person shooting the gun actually felt the recoil from the first bullet. And that worked out great. But after that third round left the barrel, it kicked you like a horse. <laughs> Which is a really interesting concept and it did appear to work, so why on earth didn't America pick the G11? Well, first of all, the caseless ammunition was going to be really expensive and secondly, this thing was designed by Germans left unsupervised with no budget. So obviously this gun is way over engineered. Yeah, they tried to hide it by the fact that they made the outside of the gun look like it's made out of four pixels, but on the inside, when you go to take it apart, a fucking grandfather clock slides out of it. I mean, yeah, is the gun reliable? According to the testing, yeah, it was super reliable, but everything mechanical will fail eventually and when that thing fails, you're going to have to take it to a watchmaker that's got a degree in modern art to even begin to attempt to fix the problem. So for those reasons, the G11 is also out, which is unfortunate because it really would have tied together the Minecraft look that the American military had going on there with Digicam. <laughs> And now we get to my personal favorite because the sheer amount of balls it took to try to pull this off is unfathomable. Colt's entry. The Colt weapon has evolved from the M16A2 design. Yeah, that is straight up an M16. There's nothing special about it whatsoever. You gotta realize Colt has been selling guns to the US military for a very long time. They sold them the Colt 1911. They sold them most of the M16s they had at this point in time. They know how to sell to the US government. They know their audience. So they walked into the lab and they're like, here's the plan. We're not going to do a fucking thing. We're going to make a big, ugly foregrip, slap it on there. We're going to say it helps with target acquisition. Then we're going to slap a scope on top that actually makes it more accurate. And then we're going to design a new type of bullet where two bullets go in one casing and it's going to be called a duplex round. Yeah, Colt is walking in to pitch this new gun to Uncle Sam like, let me show you something. Does that look right to you? This entire plan is so stupid, it's genius. They're going to walk into this meeting trying to pitch this gun to Uncle Sam, and they're like, here's the deal, all your guys already know how to shoot this gun. It's the same shit we've already sold you before, except now, every time you hit the enemy, it's worth double XP. Guess what? Every magazine your guys are carrying has got 60 bullets in it, not 30. You ever heard of semi-automatic? This is dose automatic. Three round burst just became six round burst. It's still got full auto, but now it's on 2x speed. So at this point, it's looking like Colt's going to win the bid, and America's going to be shooting bogus at every bad guy for the next 50 years and then the, like the one dude that all these weapons manufacturers didn't give a big Christmas bonus to is like hey um if the only thing making that gun more accurate is the scope and all these other guns also have scopes why don't we try putting one of those scopes on the regular M16 and just see what happens why are you the way that you are every time I try to do something fun you make it not that way. So that's exactly what they do. The scopes on the G11 and the Steyr are fixed in place and can't be removed, but the scope that's on the Colt and the AAI both can be, so they pop those off, throw them on a regular M16, and holy shit, it's more accurate than all of the other guns. So that's exactly what America goes with. The scope that's on the Colt ends up being the M134 scope that goes on pretty much every 240 and saw to this day, and the scope that was on the AAI ends up being 
the ACOG. So this is great news because now America just has to buy a bunch of scopes and they don't have to buy a bunch of new guns as well. And now they're only out the money that it took for all the research of developing four new guns completely from the ground up, which is like, you know, $300 million to figure out that if you put a scope on a gun, it gets more accurate. You know, I started this video with every intention of doing the XM29 project next and then the army's new rifle, the XM7 after that, but I honestly don't know if I have it in me after this one. I need a beer. Um, so I guess in conclusion, this is a story of how America ended up getting ACOGs and M134 machine gun optics because the US military decided they were gonna spend $300 million to come to the conclusion that sticking a scope on top of a rifle does in fact make it more accurate. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. You know, I think the part that upsets me the most about all of this is we spent $300 million on this dumb shit and it's been like 40 years and I still can't find an ACOG for less than like a thousand dollars.